Hey guys, it's your boy Arj, back again with another Dragon Ball Super Movie 2018 Theory and Analysis video, this time covering the inevitable moment the Prince of All Saiyans finally comes face to face with the new Ancient Saiyans. I hear a lot of talk about Vegeta not having a serious role in the movie given his past movie performance, but I beg to differ given the fact this is a movie surrounding the origin of the Saiyans and no Saiyan is more important than the Prince of all of them. But please do leave your comments down below right now about what you think Vegeta will bring to the new movie. Any surprises here or more of the same? Let me know so I can personally reply to you. But before we begin guys, if you're new here, don't forget to smash that subscribe button to join the Dragon Ball gang here where we have monthly giveaways every damn month. One click and you're in, so get it done now. But moving on, first things first, if any of you did not know already, the new Dragon Ball Super movie will be canon and set after the events of Dragon Ball Super episode 131 and that's all confirmed despite how young Goku looks here. But that poses the question of how were things left off with Vegeta at the end of Dragon Ball Super. Well as we know, after the events of the Tournament of Power, Vegeta immediately returned home to take care of his baby daughter and celebrate with the rest of the Z fighters. But unlike at the end of the Z, there were no breaks in terms of training and Goku and Vegeta went back to fight against each other in blue form and in the iconic setting of the area where they first met. During this fight however, we uncovered some serious information regarding the place of Vegeta now in the hierarchy of power. Goku revealed that he can no longer use Ultra Instinct and it's very much a one-time thing or something that can be tapped into under extreme circumstances. While we know Vegeta's new Limit Break form is not like that. Confirmed pretty much by Vegeta's reaction to Goku's admission. Vegeta's new Evolution Blue form is a natural transformation he unlocked whilst in the middle of battle. Nothing like Ultra Instinct which is more of a technique. Now that leaves the question of is Vegeta the most powerful Saiyan alive right now then? Because Goku only has Kaioken Blue now as his max form. Now it's never been sent for sure in the anime, it's even hinted that Vegeta's new form is just a limit breaker form like Kaioken Blue, albeit sent from Krillin, meaning they could be equal, but the truth is when we as fans look back at Evolution Blue and when Goku and Vegeta were fighting during Vegeta was clearly doing a lot more than Goku when they were fighting together and the fact Vegeta took out God of Destruction Toppo by himself just shows us that yes Evolution Blue Vegeta was stronger than Kaioken Blue even if marginally and it was only when Goku unlocked Ultra Instinct that he surpassed Vegeta. So now if we were to compare the two right now Vegeta is more than likely the strongest Saiyan with a form that surpasses Goku's current blue. And that's not just amazing news for us Vegeta fans out there, but also super important when thinking about the new movie. So far we know of one new ancient Saiyan featuring in the movie, but there could be more but we've only seen one. The reason why I think there could be more is we already know for sure as confirmed by the writers, Goku will not be the only Z fighter featured. Vegeta is already in the promotional work and I quote, all your favourite Saiyans will appear. So they will need to be involved in a fight too and it would be so very very out of place if this new Saiyan could suddenly keep up with Goku let alone all of the Saiyans at once like he's the new Broly. I can only assume just for the sake of not completely copying the Broly movie there will be at least one other Saiyan for Vegeta to go toe to toe with at least. But talking of Broly and head back to how Vegeta will actually react. The Broly movie though non-canon actually gives us our best look at what Vegeta will do when he meets a new fellow Saiyan. I mean that along with when he meets Kaba, but I'll move on to that after. Before Vegeta even met Broly he was greeted by Paragus and his men who immediately addressed Vegeta as Sire before Paragus bowed down which immediately brought a smile to Vegeta's face as he said you're a Saiyan aren't you? Showing that Vegeta is definitely not out of touch of enjoying the presence of another Saiyan and in fact embraces it especially when they recognise his royalty. However, when Paragus started to mention Vegeta being the new king of a new planet Vegeta and rebuilding the same race, Vegeta looked completely unimpressed. 
But once Paragus mentioned the existence of the legendary Super Saiyan, Vegeta's tone turned. The existence of a new powerful Saiyan, one potentially stronger than him, brings out his warrior pride and he immediately goes with Paragus to the new planet Vegeta. This legendary Super Saiyan, as we know however, then turned out to be none other than Broly. When Vegeta initially then met Broly, he immediately confirms he too is a Saiyan, but doesn't give him too much other dialogue than that, until he hears the legendary Super Saiyan is attacked, which of course was a lie, to which he specifically asked for Broly to accompany him, giving us the idea Vegeta is very inclined to forming bonds with his fellow race, even at first glance. Fast forward to the next time Vegeta meets another Saiyan and it's under very different circumstances and in the Karen storyline where he meets Kaba, but this time when he meets Kaba, he's shot. But this could be just more due to the fact Kaba looks so very different to what you'd expect from a Saiyan. Even us fans would think that given those strange uncharacteristic eyes. But he soon comes to terms with it and relaxes when he recalls back in the old days before Freezer's rule the Saiyans wore very similar armour to Kaba, as we saw from Shalot from Dragon Ball Legends. When it came down to actually fighting Kaba, that's when the smile finally re-emerged on his face as he saw Kaba get into the traditional Saiyan fighting stance. Before this previous trend of forming bonds quickly with his brethren showed itself again when Vegeta began subconsciously training Kaba to unlock Super Saiyan to give him some level of challenge and then again after he defeated him, telling him to improve and that one day he would like to meet the King of Sadala. With these two meetings in mind, it's easy to see and say now that when Vegeta meets these ancient Saiyans, he too will have a mix of these two experiences. Initially when he sees these warriors go into the most traditional of Saiyan fighting stances, I'm sure he will be entirely pleased yet again, though there may be some discrepancies since the fighting form is likely to have evolved over time. But again, this is a moment when Vegeta will then bring in some sort of Saiyan lore, I'm sure, to explain things. Now, whether these Saiyans will have any comparable strength is another thing, and it's entirely possible that the Saiyan Vegeta meets will have no ability to transform just like Kaba. We already know from the promotional images, there will be a period where both Goku and Vegeta opt for Super Saiyan 1 forms, so there may again be a point where Vegeta, in a bid to gain some more challenge, and help out his fellow brethren will again bring about a Super Saiyan transformation. This transformation however for whatever reason as we have seen from the trailer may bring about a transformation very different to his own. A transformation more akin to the legendary Super Saiyan transformation but still different in its own right with its bright green key enveloping them. And there's many reasons for this but the possibility that makes most sense to me is that genetically these ancient Saiyans are less evolved than those of the Saiyans we know. Their DNA and hence S cells, the cells of Saiyans which dictate their ability to transform are inherently different and more primitive. As a result it's definitely very possible the transformation they unleash may be an entirely different beast to that of Goku and Vegeta. It is more than likely will be many more times more powerful than a regular Super Saiyan transformation and that makes sense for a lot of reasons as well since they are not going to have a movie where Goku and Vegeta don't have a challenge while in blue form. So there will have to be some sort of retcon like this to explain why their power level is so large. When this happens, just like when Vegeta saw the power of Broly as he powered up, he will look on in shock realising that yes, this Saiyan is the one, the legendary Super Saiyan transformation of legend that he remembers from the stories, or some other new Saiyan lore that will be brought in specifically for the movie just as the idea of the first Super Saiyan God was brought in specifically for the Battle of Gods. And just like that, more than likely the scenes will be set for the next series of Dragon Ball Super. But yeah guys, that was it for today's Dragon Ball Super Theory Analysis video with my own prediction and thoughts of exactly how Vegeta's meeting with the new Saiyans will go down. But your comments are always the most important here so make sure to comment down below exactly what you think of my ideas and what your own ideas are for Vegeta so that I can reply to you to carry on the discussion. As always if you're new here don't forget to smash that subscribe button to join the Dragon Ball gang we have here where there are monthly giveaways and sweepstakes up for grabs just for being a subscriber. Hit that button now and until next video guys, cheers.